welcome. It's good to have you here with us as we learn more about this upcoming program from Northwestern Kellogg Executive Education. We're going to be learning all about product strategy here today, uh, discovering, developing, managing, and marketing products as a business. Uh, we're going to be touching on two key themes uh, of this program. Firstly, we're going to be learning all about the program content. So what can you expect to learn? What are those learning objectives and how can they be applied to your work, your organization? The second thing we're going to be touching on is how you'll be learning. Uh, so what is the learning experience like? What is that day-to-day -day experience of being a participant in this program? Um, you're going to be learning together with your cohort throughout your time in this program. So you'll have that opportunity to get to know one another and to, and to get that sort of broadened uh, tapestry of perspectives and ideas as you make your way through your learning journey uh, together with a truly diverse cohort of peers. And so certainly uh, that's demonstrated here today um, in today's informational webinar as you learn more about this program and as you learn more about one another. So let's go ahead and dive in as we set the stage here today. Um, why Kellogg Executive Education at Northwestern University? Uh, so there's a, a picture of Northwestern here on your screen and certainly uh, we're not in person on campus, but here in this online learning community, uh, we're able to get a, a rich and interactive um, experience. And that's one of the things that Northwestern uh, Kellogg has focused their pedagogical approach to online learning around what we know works best for adult learners. Um, so here's some of the things you can expect uh, here in this program and in all programs at Northwestern. Uh, firstly, top Kellogg faculty. Um, and certainly that's one of the things that we'll showcase here for you today. Uh, Kellogg's renowned thought leaders uh, share their knowledge, but they do so in a way that helps to facilitate your learning uh, through thoughtful discussion throughout the program. So again, a big part of what you'll be doing here is interacting with one another um, throughout your throughout your time in the program and then interacting directly uh, with top uh, industry experts here. Peer-to-peer uh, -peer connections are a big part of what you can expect in this program uh, through both formal and informal activities. And then finally, a high quality transformative learning experience. Uh, so the idea here is to take these concepts, these theories that you're learning and really bring them into action in your organization. Um, and that's a, a big part of how we've designed the curriculum here to give you that transformative learning experience through timely, actionable content. Uh, so we're gonna showcase all of this here for you today. And um, so let's dive a little bit more deeply. Who is this program for? Uh, who was this program designed for? Um, you have arrived at the right place if you're here to learn more about product strategy, that life cycle of a product. Um, so here are some of the exemplar roles that we had in mind when we developed this program at uh, business managers and leaders product or portfolio strategy specialists, professionals at tech-driven firms, and professionals who want to take on a more uh, formal product management role. So you might be looking to switch careers or build your career um, in, this, in this vein of uh, product management. So if you're interested in product management, if you're interested in learning about that product life cycle, um, and playing a, you know, touching strategy, sort of how do I strategize around the product life cycle? Uh, if you're helping a client as a consultant to do the same, uh, this is certainly uh, the program for you. Uh, so as, as you think about this idea of program fit, um, but as we kickstart the show, we're going to start off by telling you more about that tactical day-to-day -day experience of being a participant in this program. So what is that learning experience? like. Uh, before we dive into the content here, uh, we want to showcase for you uh, some of those interactions that you can expect throughout the program. Um, if you think of two words that best describe this program, uh, the words that come to mind are convenient and interactive. So we've been able to create um, a nice blend of synchronous and asynchronous material uh, to give you the highest level of convenience, being able to touch in on the program content around a schedule that works for you, as well as a high level of relationship building and interaction. Uh, so you have those opportunities to build relationships with your teaching team, your peers, your colleagues. You also have a chance uh, to have that convenience of a program that you can touch in on around a schedule that works for you. So you can see here on your screen, uh, we estimate four to six hours across these eight weeks of content. 
So each week you can try and carve out that four to six hours that best works for you. Uh, this can be in the mornings before work and um, then the afternoons when the children are sleeping in the evenings, uh, really identifying those windows within each of these eight weeks. Um, from there, you'll be watching brief video segments. Uh, we call this uh, pedagogy uh, bite-sized learning. Um, and what we mean by that is a chance for you to really take your learning um, at your own pace um, and really fully immerse yourself in the process of learning as you go. So you'll watch a brief uh, five to 10 minute video segments that sort of outline the theories and concepts that you'll be covering. And then from there, you step away and you take part in these interactive uh, features of the program. There are quizzes, peer discussions, assignments, opinion polls, a lot of opportunity uh, for you to, to really engage with the material that you're learning, roll up your sleeves um, and fully immerse yourself before going back and watching the next segments of videos. So this is a bite-sized learning approach, a fully immersive um, learning approach, and one that you can take at your own pace. Um, all of the assignments are geared towards practical application, helping you take your learning to a place of practice um, in the real world. And we do that through a variety of different uh, case studies and other features, which we'll describe a bit later on when we cover the curriculum for the program. Um, but as you think about those relationships that you're building, one of the most critical components of your learning in this program is a chance uh, to get connected with your course leaders. Uh, these are subject matter experts that have been selected by Northwestern Kellogg to come into this program and serve as your teaching fellows at that day-to-day -day level, uh, really helping to drive engagement in the program, to push your thinking, um, and to give you that individualized experience. So as you think about some of these questions related to, you know, you know, how do I get additional resources about a niche area of interest I might be uh, wanting to explore, uh, you have uh, these course leaders in the program host office hours, a chance for you to turn on your video and audio um, and reach out and participate in that reciprocal learning environment. Uh, ask for those resources um, and engage uh, with your subject matter experts. Um, as mentioned, they give you that individualized experience and a part of how they do that is through giving you feedback on your assignments. Uh, so they're looking at your assignments and really helping to push your thinking um, and, and give you that, that critical feedback uh, that's going to add so much value to your learning. So you have, as, if you're a visual learner like I am, um, I like to think of that as sort of concentric circles of teaching and learning uh, taking place. You have yourself at the center as an individual learner. Um, a layer beyond that, you have your peers uh, who you're learning together with and from. A layer beyond that, you have your course leaders, these subject matter experts who, who work in industry and are coming in to share their knowledge and really help guide that teaching experience. A layer beyond that, you have your program faculty. I'll be introducing in just a moment, a Professor Mohan Sani, um, who's really at the helm of your curriculum, at the helm of, of the way this program has been designed. And then finally, that larger uh, community there at Northwestern Kellogg, part of this larger ecosystem of teaching and learning, are really setting the stage with its mission, um, driving you towards a transformative learning experience. So many different layers of teaching and learning, and all of this is housed together uh, by a 24-7 uh, program support team. So at any point in time throughout the program, if you need assistance, uh, you'll be able to reach out and get that real-time assistance. Um, in addition, uh, you have access to the program for an entire year. So you have an eight-week program, sort of a condensed, uh, robust, interactive experience, um, but you'll be able to touch into the program for an entire year, allowing you to re-watch videos, take a look at those assignments and discussion boards, and continue to take your learning um, into your organizations and into your professional worlds. So a lot of rich opportunity here for you. Um, the live faculty webinars are a big part of, uh, of what sets this course apart, which is a chance for you to learn directly um, from the program faculty, Professor Mohan Sani. And we'll give you a little bit more information about his background in just a moment. Um, but these, these opportunities for you to engage in live webinars uh, where you'll dive deeper into topics, you can submit questions in advance to be answered by your course professor um, and really customize these sessions around uh, your interests and your feedback. So no two webinars are alike, um, and from cohort to cohort, uh, no two programs are, are alike uh, because you really are part of that um, building of that community in real time. So that's what these live webinars are a chance for you to do. Come in, bring in your thoughts, bring in your questions, and really help shape the learning experience as you make your way through these eight weeks. 
Uh, this is what a typical participant profile looks like here um, by industry. Uh, so we talk about your peer cohort and we talk about how important it is uh, that you're learning from your peers. And one of the reasons why uh, this is going to be adding value to your learning experience is because your peers are diverse in many different ways, not only geographically, but across industry areas, professional roles, years of work experience. So as you think about your learning, you'll be developing your con these concepts and ideas in your work, in your geography, um, in your industry role. Um, but you'll also, in learning shoulder to shoulder with your peers, you'll see these ideas come to life in their industries, in their geographies, in their professional roles, uh, really, again, giving you that expanded uh, experience. So your learning is a deep dive, but you also have that broadened perspective, sort of those tapestry of ideas um, that, that you're learning together uh, with your peers. So industry areas that are represented here, you'll see uh, that the largest one uh, falls in this category of other, um, and that really just... Uh, across the gamut from education, retail, real estate, and um, others that are represented here, are IT products and services, banking and financial services, healthcare and consulting. Um, here's those years of work experience that we typically see come through this program. Uh, with the vast majority of you sort of at that mid-career or senior level uh, within your organizations, about 15% of you are just starting out, um, another 26% at that mid-career level. Um, but then from there, um, really, you know, 15 years uh, or more of experience is really kind of the majority here. So as you think, again, about your peer cohort, uh, you're going to be interacting with a very experienced group um, of professionals who are coming together to learn more about product strategy. Um, all of this culminates in a chance to earn a certificate of completion. Uh, this is a credential from Northwestern Kellogg uh, that really will help to formalize your training and give you that, uh, that credential that you can put on your LinkedIn profile, you can put it on your social media accounts, um, showcasing your learning and your expertise in this area of product strategy. Uh, so for those of you looking to build your careers or springboard into some career advancement opportunities, I'm certainly having a credential here from Northwestern Kellogg Executive Education will go a long way in helping you to achieve those goals. So as you think about these big takeaways, uh, immediately upon entering the program, you're broadening out your professional network, you're gaining peers and colleagues from across the globe. You're also working towards a chance to earn a credential here from Northwestern Kellogg. So a lot of big returns on your investment in this program, not only in terms of the learning, but some of these other sort of uh, peripheral uh, assets and takeaways from the program as well. So a, a broadened professional network and a chance to, to join uh, an alumni community here at Northwestern Kellogg uh, with a certification of completion. You can see, again, uh, sort of the two major themes that we see coming to life is this interactive experience that really brings your learning into a place of real world application. So that's a, a general theme that you'll see throughout our testimonials here. Um, and Professor Saadi will touch on this as well um, as he joins in to tell us more about the program content. Um, but really, the, the way the program was designed using case study analysis and other tools, um, again, helping you to better understand how to approach product management and strategy roles uh, within your organization. So here's a little bit um, more about your professor. We uh, were very uh, honored uh, to have Professor Mohan Sani uh, designing this curriculum here. You can see a little bit about his background. He's the Associate Dean for Digital Innovation, the McCormick Foundation Chair of Technology, a clinical professor of marketing, and the director of the Center for Research in Technology and Innovation at Northwestern Kellogg. Um, his background here, um, he's a consultant and advisor and scholar. Uh, you'll see he's um, helped uh, to speak on business innovation, modern marketing, and enterprise analytics across the globe for uh, advisory boards um, in Hong Kong, India, Israel, and the U.S. Um, he's published seven books. His most recent book, The Sentient Enterprise, was on the Wall Street Journal bestseller list. Um, and you can see some of the organizations that he uh, consults for here, Microsoft, Salesforce, Facebook, Sony, and other, others as well. So with that, let's go ahead and dive into some of these program details here. Um, we're going to start off here by talking about products um, 
um, are the foundation for growth. And so some, these are some of the products that we'll be exploring here in the program. Macintosh, iPod, iPhone, iPad, uh, Microsoft, uh, Windows, Office, Azure, um, Outpoint, uh, Dynamite, Nylon, Teflon. So these are some of those uh, products that we'll be exploring here throughout the program. Um, but who is minding the product? So who is sort of paying attention and nurturing that product? And you'll see some of those, those uh, the stakeholders involved here throughout the product life cycle, um, from marketing to customers, of course, employees, partners, legal team, finance, manufacturing, usability, development. Uh, these are all of the different touch points that you can expect here uh, throughout the product life cycle that you'll wanna be thinking about um, as you think about developing a product strategy. So what happens without a product strategy? Uh, there's no product ownership. So nobody's really nurturing that, that product and minding that product. No customer advocacy. So who's really thinking about the product and those touch points with customers? no single orchestrator and no strategy alignment. And so these are some of the things that will, will trickle down uh, without a, a strategic approach uh, to, to the way you're thinking about the product life cycle. So who, is the, the, who are the stakeholders? Who needs a product strategy? Uh, technology industry. So big tech as well as tech startups, software, hardware, electronics, networking, semiconductors, e-commerce, uh, these are going to be critical right at the center here. Um, industrial products, consumer durables, medical equipment, medical devices, automotive construction and agricultural equipment, and then tech intensive services. So you can think of products um, as a as sort of tangible and you can think of products as a service as well. And that's often one of the questions we get in this program. Um, if you're thinking of product as a service, is this program gonna be touching on those themes? And certainly that's a big part of what we talk about here at uh, FinTech, um, insure tech, legal tech. Uh, these are some of the things that we're going to be thinking about in new and innovative ways. So typically, uh, we don't think of services as products, but now that's becoming more and more evident uh, that thinking of services as a product is going to help us to really uh, create that strategic uh, perspective. So here's what we're going to be doing together throughout the program. Um, understanding product strategy. That's, it. That's where we're going to start. So what is product strategy? How do we define those terminologies? And how do we understand what exactly are we talking about when we talk about product strategy? From there, we'll be going into analyzing product opportunities. So now that we know what strategy is, where are some of those opportunities that lie? And how can we best identify those and tease those out? Uh, from there, we'll be learning about discovery and requirements definition. So really discovering what it's going to take to bring this product, these opportunities into an operational place. So, you know, what are those requirements? Um, from there, designing the business model. So now putting this all together, the strategy, the opportunities the ex that exist and the methodologies that you'll need to get there into this comprehensive business model. From there, agile product development. So we're going to be talking about how to stay agile throughout that product life cycle, um, taking products to market. So now it's time to take our product to market. How best do we do that? What's our strategic approach there? From there, managing the partner ecosystem. So now you're working with uh, partners um, as your product is um, in the market and now you're managing that ecosystem. And finally, um, managing product evolution and growth. So now uh, you've got that ecosystem running, it's a fluid engine, and now we're thinking more about evolution and growth. And that's where we end as we make our way through these eight weeks. Um, with that, I am going to step out of the spotlight now and hand it over to today's subject matter expert and keynote presenter, Professor Mohan Sani. Thank you, Professor Sani, for being here with, with us today. I'm going to hand it over to you uh, to take us through the program overview. Yeah, so I think, uh, uh, Marie, thank you so much for taking us through sort of the uh, overview of the program and uh, the learning journey. Uh, I thought what I would do is uh, give you a flavor for what you can expect in terms of the concepts and the frameworks and what like each week or each module might feel like. So as, uh, as Marie outlined to you in the learning journey, we begin sort of at the front end of the innovation process, the product development process, by understanding opportunities and then doing the discovery work that, that converts that opportunity into a product concept and then thinking about how we actually build and execute product development through agile approaches and then think, and, and the second part of the program will be talking about how you actually take the product to market and build your partnerships and alliances and uh, the go-to-market strategy. 
So let's look at now each of these modules in a little bit more detail. So in, in, in sort of, we will begin our discussion with opportunity, right? All products ultimately begin as opportunities. So, uh, so in this process, we're gonna talk about opportunity analysis, where do we find opportunities, how do we structure them? And here's an example of a framework that we'll talk about in assessing opportunities. And this is sort of a very simple framework that I call real win worth, right? So it's like the, the so there are three dimensions of fit we are gonna look at, product market fit, product company fit, and product business fit. Is it real? Can we win? Is it worth it? So this is, an, uh, and in terms of is it real, is like, is the problem real? Is the market real? Is there really an, un, an unsolved problem or unmet need? In terms of product company fit, it's like, why us, right? Why, why is it that, uh, that our capabilities and our value proposition is better than what competitors or alternatives might offer? And third, can we make money? Is it monetizable? Is it the, the unit economics or the business model worth it? So that's an example of what we will do in opportunity analysis. Moving on, as we get to the next module, we will then talk about the, the process of discovery, which is, see, in opportunity analysis, we talked about uh, identifying opportunities. So we are in the problem domain there. We are trying to understand the customer problem, but then we swiftly then go into the solution domain. So mapping the problem to a solution is the product of discover, process, process of discovery. What are we discovering? Product market fit, right? At the end of the day, what you want is a fit between the product, which is the solution, and the market, which is the problem or the customer end of it, right? So that iterative process is what we're going to focus on in the second module. And that iterative process begins with thinking. It begins with hypotheses. And, and in fact, this is something that we call an opportunity hypothesis or a discovery hypothesis. The discovery hypothesis that we believe that there is an opportunity to create this solution for this problem, right? If we build it, they will come kind of a statement, right? So this we do based on jobs to be done analysis and based on your customer research and based on sort of all of the insight work that we do. Then we make something, we make an artifact. The artifact can be a wireframe, it can be a prototype, it can be an HTML kind of mock-up of a landing page, it can be a physical prototype. So some sort of artifact, by the way, this is what we call MVX, minimum viable something. Minimum viable artifact could be a minimum viable product. By the way, the MVP or the minimum viable product is not necessarily a product. It can be an explainer video. It can be a wireframe. It can be any, anything that allows you to get feedback from customer. And then we check. And check is the testing, right? So that's UI, UX testing, A-B testing, and you know, different. And then we iterate on this process. By the way, this process seems very simple on paper, but as I'm going to point, you to, point out to you in the module and through the examples, it may take several years for companies to kind of come up with the product market fit and the ultimate market that they end up with or the product they end up with is quite different from the journey that they start out with, right? So what they start out with. So uh, I don't know if you know or, uh, that that YouTube was initially a video hookup application, right? It was just created as a sort of a dating application and, and look where YouTube has come since then. So that's the process of iter iteration and discovering a product solution to the customer problem. Moving on, in the, in the next module, we will talk about uh, business models. Too often I find that companies, startup companies in particular, will build a product, take it to market, and not have a clear understanding of how you're going to make money, or is, or is it really viable? So business models are really the monetization framework the value capture framework, which is how you're going to actually make money. So in this module, we'll talk about the different types of business models. Now, you know, there are many types of monetization frameworks. There's the SaaS or the subscription model. There is a transaction model. There is the, the advertising supported model. And now increasingly now with the metaverse and so on, there are NFTs and digital goods and digital currencies. So there's lots of, there's microtransactions. We're going to look at sort of what are the you know, pros and cons of the different models how do you actually measure the performance of each of the, these business models? What are the KPIs we think about? And how does the business model itself evolve? Because your business model may change, may evolve, and a company may have multiple business models at the same time. Take a company like Microsoft. They have a subscription-based model for many of their cloud services. They also have a transactional model for their Xbox and Surface devices, right? And they have an advertising model for Bing. Uh, and Microsoft advertising. So there are multiple models that may coexist. So what is that portfolio? How do we manage it? How do we optimize it? Is going to be our discussion in this. Moving on, 
to, to, to the next module, we're then going to start to focus on how do you actually build products and manage product development projects and programs. And, and of course, as some of you know, Agile has become a, a kind of a, the dominant way in which software, particularly software pro pro products are developed. So they, we're going to focus on the people and process aspect in this particular module. And a key thing we're going to talk about there is agile development and techniques or methodologies like Scrum and Kanban that are project develop, product development methodologies. And then the basic philosophical principles there in, the, in, in agile are that, that development is done in smaller chunks, a smaller project, and, and, and is done in small teams, cross-functional teams, you know, of eight to 12 people. And you have these sprints or very disciplined time-bound cycles, which are designed to test, learn, iterate. Um, and, uh, and, and the idea that you want to actually experiment, you want to test, and it's okay to make mistakes, but what is important really is to have frequent, open, and efficient and honest communication. So those are the principles and pillars of agile development. So that's the product development. Now, moving on, when we've discussed these aspects, this is the first half of the program. This half of the program really focuses on building products, bringing them to life. Next, we will talk about how do you take them to market. So we will make a transition in module five and we'll start to think about the go-to-market plan. So this is, an, this is, by the way, this is something that we call GTM or go-to-market strategy. So the elements of the go-to-market plan are what we're gonna focus on here. You know, and, and these are seven elements, essential elements of your go-to-market plan. Who is your target persona? Right? Who is the customer that we are selling to? And who is the audience? By the way, in the B2B case, this may be a combination of the buyer persona, the influencer persona, the decision maker persona, and so on. Uh, what's the value proposition, right? What is the value promise we're making? What is the off, you know, what is it that we are uh, uh, offering them that is different, that is better, that is more compelling than competitive alternative? What's our go-to uh, marketing communication plan? What mix of channels and messaging are we going to use? Um, so this is your for your marketing plan. Channels, how does our product actually reach customers? What are the choices of channels that we're going to take? Are we going to use white label? Are we going to use partners? Are we going to go DTC, direct to customer? Uh, so what is that mix of channels that will best high touch versus high tech uh, or low touch, you know, zero touch versus sort of inside sales and, and, and field sales and so on, right? Then uh, what are the economics, right? What is, when does the product break even? What is the profitability? What is the unit economics? What's the financial plan? You know, what's the ROI that we expect and what is the time to value? Then internal communication, making sure all of the internal organization is aligned, right? Whether it's your sales organization or whether it's your uh, support organization or whether it's the IT systems that need to support transactions, billing, invoicing, legal, all that internal communication. And finally, operational readiness, making sure that operational readiness of both internal and external, that we have everybody ready to go, that our systems are ready, our retail stores are ready, our salespeople are trained, that everybody is, you know, so these are the elements of your go-to-market plan. So moving on, in the next module, we're going to, we're going to talk about uh, the fact that you don't uh, go alone. You don't take a product to market alone. And very rarely, even large companies some of the biggest technology companies don't have all the capabilities in-house, right? So as you think about capability gaps, there are three ways to fill those capability gaps. You could either build it internally, right? You can actually develop that capability internally, which is what we call the make, or you could acquire the capability by making an acquisition, or you could partner, right? So this is called the make buyer ally decision. And this is a constant sort of discussion that goes back and forth. If you look recently, last week, you know, Microsoft announced the big acquisition of Activision Blizzard. Why did they do that? It's a buy strategy, right? Why did they do that? Well, because they realized that uh, gaming is going to become the entry point into what we're calling the metaverse, right? So that is sort of the on-ramp. And, and therefore, Microsoft wants to have a strong presence in gaming because gaming becomes a way to start visualizing all of the applications and spaces in the metaverse, whether it's learning applications or whether it's you know uh, entertainment or real estate or commerce and so on. So as Facebook made a big bet with Meta and it's sort of repositioning or relabeling itself as Meta, Microsoft's response is to come in. And this is not the first acquisition they've made. They made other acquisitions in the past in this gaming space. So that's the buy strategy. Um, but in other cases, you want to actually build it internally, right? So, uh, and by the way, sometimes these strategies change. Uh, so for example, look at how 
um, mapping used to work. Right? In, the, in, the, in the originally when Apple started with the iPhone ecosystem, they were allied with, with Google, right? So they did an alliance strategy where Google was supplying the mapping. And in fact, Eric Schmidt served on the board of Apple. But as Apple started to build its ecosystem and they realized mapping is strategic, location is strategic. So we actually need to bring this in house. So they started to make Apple Maps. In fact, they kicked Eric Schmidt off the board. He is no longer serves on the board of Apple because now Google is a competitor. So this is a very fluid and dynamic process, right? So it's make, buy, or ally. And by the way, I sit at the, at the, at the center of this when, you know, there's a, I serve on the board of Reliance Geo, which some of you might know is, and if you don't know, it is the, perhaps the most exciting wire digital services company today on the planet. You know, we have the second biggest uh, network of uh, subscribers, 450 million subscribers, all consuming 17 to 18 gigabytes of data, wireless data a month. So at, at, at Geo, Geo has become kind of the uh, biggest player in the wireless services business. So as you are Google and you're trying to enter the Indian market or make sure that you have a foothold into this spectrum, you need to partner. So Google made a five, four, four and a half billion dollar investment in Geo. If you're Facebook and you understand that more WhatsApp is an asset that has not been monetized. So, so by the way, WhatsApp, in my view, is the largest non-monetized asset in the world today. Two billion users, but zero revenues. So Facebook invested in Geo because we are partnering with Facebook to come up with a commercialization of WhatsApp. WhatsApp is being used as a business platform, as is WeChat in China. Same thing with Google. We've just announced the creation of a new version of the Android operating system called the Pragati OS and a phone called the Geo Phone Next, which is a $60 full-featured smartphone that we partnered with Google. So that's an ally strategy. So this, this whole this concept of partnerships and ecosystems and platforms is central to technology product management. That's what we're going to cover in this module. Moving on, in the next module, we talk about the fact that you know, uh, product market fit is not a static construct. It is not something that you do once and you're done. In fact, the moment you launch a new product into the market and then you evolve it over time, you realize that you know, there are different segments and you need to think about, should we fork the product? Should we have multiple products in our product line? You know, what, are the, what are the customer segments that we should prioritize? And, and, and should we do it with one product or two products? I remember having a conversation with uh, Robin Groshall, who I work with uh, at Salesforce. She's the senior vice president and was responsible for you know, uh, 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 marketing cloud. And you know, so and, and and sales cloud at, at various times. So one of the the things that she told me is that Salesforce, when they are building the sales cloud, they realize that there is a the sales cloud has become an enterprise product. It's like it really appeals. It has a lot of functionality, a lot of you know features that appeal to enterprise customers. But now there is a big opportunity in the small business segment. So for a small business, what they try to do is they try to adapt sales cloud and tried to make a version of it called Salesforce Essentials, right? And the Essentials was basically a re-rendered version of the core product. Well, it turned out that that didn't work. It didn't work because the product was still too complicated. And small businesses, they don't want all of the enterprise features. They want just simplicity, ease of use, and convenience. So ultimately, they had to scrap that project and come up with a brand new Salesforce Essentials product. So that's the idea of forking. So we're going to talk about in the final module how we make, how we evolve, how do we do product line extensions, how do we drive product growth, how do we look at customer development, and then how do we do pruning, how do we cut back on our SKUs, and how do we do sunsetting where we kill products. So that is the journey that we're going to take in terms of product market fit evolution. So that, folks, is the is 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 a very quick whirlwind tour of what you can expect across these different modules. And I'll turn it over to Murray uh, to tell you how you can actually participate in this exciting program. And by the way, I have to say that this program, Murray, is not just something I, I teach. It is something that I, that I, I live, eat, and breathe. Uh, by the way, this program itself is a product that I've created, right? So we're doing product management here, and I'm doing product marketing right now. So this is very meta, right? In the sense that uh, I really enjoy and I bring a lot of passion and work with a lot of startup companies and the big tech companies. You know, everyone from like the Facebook, Google, Microsoft, Salesforce, these are companies I spent day in and day out with, as well as some really exciting startup companies. So, uh, so I hope to bring that passion, that experience and that sort of understanding uh, to this program. You'll find it in the materials, you'll find it in our live sessions like this live session that we are having. Over to you, Marie, to, to tell us how they can uh, participate in the program. 
Absolutely. Uh, thank you, Professor Sani, for being here with us and describing these elements of the program and the curriculum here. Um, it's been an absolute honor uh, learning more about this program directly from you as the designer of the course. Um, I know you're staying on here for questions, so I'll just remind our audience here today, if you have any questions for Professor Sani, uh, we've got about, uh, we, we've got some time left here. So put those questions in the Q&A. We're going to devote the rest of our time, um, and we want to make sure that that high level of relationship relationship building and support that we describe throughout our time in the program, we want to make sure that that starts right here, right now. Um, and what we'd like to do is get you connected with one of our program academic advisors uh, who's here with us on the call live today. Um, our academic advisors are the course foremost experts when it comes to all of these registration and enrollment uh, questions that you might have. So uh, you might have log logistical questions about the course start date. Uh, when are those live sessions held? I want to make sure they're on my calendar so I don't miss an opportunity to learn live uh, from Professor Sani. Uh, your program advisors can give you those calendar holds, put those dates in your time zone, um, and ensure that you're, you're able to visualize your schedule as you look across these eight weeks. Um, they can help you with any course policy questions you have. Uh, so you might be wondering, how do I earn that certificate of completion? What's the evaluative criteria for the program? Uh, they'll be able to take you through those details, um, explore those assignments, and help you to gain a better understanding about some of these course policy um, that have been implemented for the program success. And then, of course, that registration and enrollment process, you know, how do I apply um, in terms of financing, uh, if you're interested in flexible and transparent financing options, uh, your advisors can help walk you through some of those flexible payment options, special group enrollment pricing. Uh, you'll see a, a bar at the top of your screen here um, about some of our referral program, or a, a referral benefit here. Uh, so your advisors can take you through all of those details. Um, you'll notice there on the right of your screen, you'll have a QR code. So if I have a smartphone, uh, you can hold up uh, your camera there. It'll take you right over to the course landing page. You'll see there's also a link there. Uh, you're not able to click on the link on your screen, but if you open your chat box, um, you'll see that our program support team has posted a link there for us in the chat. And I'm gonna ask our host to post that one more time so it falls all the way at the bottom of the chat um, and folks can easily grab that link. Um, but find that link there in the chat. It's gonna take you over to the course enrollment page, uh, which looks very similar to what you see here on your screen. And when you click on that apply now button, it will invite you to put in your contact details and schedule an appointment with a program advisor. So we use a Calendly application if you're familiar with that. Um, so you'll be able to open up your schedule and find a slot that works for you and get connected right away with one of our advisors. So use that QR code, use the link um, as you get connected there with an advisor. Um, if you're not quite ready to go to the website and get connected, uh, we've also provided an email address for you. For the English-speaking audience, that's kellogg at emeritus.org. Uh, for the Spanish-speaking audience, that's admissiones.latam at emeritus.org. Uh, those email addresses are also located right there in the chat box for you. So you can simply send us an email and let us know. Um, but we have Professor Sani with us until the end of our time together to begin touching on some of these content questions. So as you think about the concepts here in the program, yeah, I'm, I'm going to start with the uh, the question that we see here, founder of a five-year-old B2B enterprise here, um, a service tech startup from India leading demand and the entire business side of things. Uh, so over the next couple of years, he wants to transition into a product leader role. Um, is this program going to be the right fit for someone sort of in this uh, circumstance who's really looking uh, to move into a product leadership role? Um, so, uh, you know, as we think about the course design, Professor Sani, I know you had a lot of different uh, professional roles in mind, industry areas in mind. Can you speak sort of at, at this high level about um, folks who are wanting to switch into careers or build their career from within, uh, really who you had in mind as you put this course together? Uh, yes, Marie. Um, I, I am a little confused by the question because uh, the question is saying I'm confused between this course and the product management course. Well, this is a product management course, but uh, so just. Uh, uh, but I think that uh, I just want to clarify uh, what is the target persona uh, that I had in mind as I was building this course. You know, just like I talked about persona. You know, we have a persona in mind. So essentially, this, this, this course is designed for people who want to really look at product management strategically. And they want to either move into product management or they want to enhance their 
uh, product management skills as a product manager, right? So you're, and by the way, just in terms of experience profile, the average person we get here has about 10 years of experience. So this is not an entry level program. This is not meant for people who are doing the nuts and bolts and nitty gritty at very early stages in their career. For them, we have a different program. It's called the professional certificate in product management, which is six months long and will focus more on certifications and the actual doing the work, tactical work of product manager. This is product strategy. This is really meant to give you a general management end-to-end -end view on how do you actually manage that whole process and manage product teams. So this is more of a sort of a strategic uh, look and a general management look at, at product management and product strategy. We have a third program that we've just launched in December, which is for the C-level, the product leader. That's called the chief product officer program. And that's for people with about 20 years of experience and really who are leading product organization. That's uh, so there's, so I think this, this is sort of the mid-career uh, uh, strategic uh, person who wants to really kind of become a product leader. And, uh, you know, there are other questions uh, related to uh, by the way, I would really request you put your questions in the Q&A box because I see some questions in the chat and uh, and those are like, you know, it's a little bit more difficult for, for us to uh, stay updated. So uh, there are, a, you know, two, two, two three questions by Kumari yeah. talking about uh, rural and uh, agri-tech. Um, uh, so, so one thing I can guarantee you that um, if there is a sector or an industry that is in, that is in your mind, I've probably worked with them, right? So, uh, so take rural for example, Kumari. There's a very good uh, there's a student of mine who's created a fantastic startup venture in India called Kheti, and she's doing greenhouses, greenhouse in a box, protected cultivation. So, Somya has her venture in in Andhra Pradesh, and uh, so she and I have been working closely. She and she actually wrote a case study with me on Kheti. You can find it on on the Harvard website. Uh, so, you know, so understanding agri tech and 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 how you know, subsistence farmers can be changed, their lives, livelihoods can be changed uh, through tech, appropriate technology, something that, you know, I am passionate about. Now, will you find each of these in each of the, with the, in the videos? No, but this is what these live sessions are for. And, you know, ask me questions about anything. So you want to ask agro, we'll talk agro. Want to talk insurance, we'll talk insurance. Government, you know, you name it, probably some industry uh, company that, that I've, you know, I've worked with seed companies. I worked with the Milk Dairy Farmers Association. I worked with the Pork Farmers Association. So it's a, so that is what you get from these live sessions. So, uh, so no, I can't guarantee that we'll do rural, we'll do, you know, all of these different uh, uh, case studies in the recorded material, but that's what these live sessions are for. The live sessions are wherever you want to take them. And uh, we can usually offer you some useful input there. Marie, what's next? Matt, let's talk about these case studies. It's sort of at the top of the question list now here, Professor Sani. Um, so these case studies are a critical component to, to learning. Uh, can you talk about how we can extrapolate frameworks um, from industry case studies that apply across in other industries as well? So let me uh, address that at three levels, Marie. Uh, so level one is that as you progress through the program, uh, we're going to bring concepts alive through a variety of case studies. Right? There are a lot of examples and cases that we will mention. Also your assignments will, 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 will require you to actually work on case studies. Your capstone will require you to work on a case study. So there'll be lots of cases and industry examples that we will cover in our uh, materials. That's a recorded material. The next level is these live sessions, right? So you, you know, and I'll present several case studies and case studies that are current. That's something that's happening right now. You know, we talked, for instance, about why Microsoft acquired Activision or is trying to acquire Activision. Uh, Microsoft is a client of mine. I've worked with them for 20 years. So, so you can ask me. I can take this in any direction you want. That's level two. Level three is that I have written uh, a lot of case studies. I think about 35 case studies uh, that you will find on the Harvard Business School publishing site. So feel free to take a look at some of those cases. I mentioned Kathy, right? Kathy is a case study that's on the HBS site. So... Uh, if you are interested in medical devices, I wrote one recently on a company called Sama Technologies that is doing healthcare analytics. So, uh, so that's another source where uh, you can go and get these cases and there'll be pointers towards that. So, uh, so there's a wide range of ways in which you can contextualize the concepts. But I think I want to make one important point. Don't get too fixated on your industry. Don't get too fixated on the specific. You're learning frameworks. Frameworks are lenses through which you can look at anything, right? It's like a camera. 
and you can point the camera anywhere and you can get a, get a beautiful picture. So really focus on the frameworks we will teach you, whether it's opportunity analysis, how you build an MVP, how you do discovery, how you do a go-to-market strategy. It applies or works for any product because what happens if today you move from company X to company Y? You know, you don't want your frameworks to be irrelevant or obsolete. So while we will contextualize, I think the really important way to look at a program like this is a telephoto lens. Yes, we will zoom in on specific industries and concepts, contexts and companies, but we will zoom out and give you generalizable frameworks. That is something that will stand with you no matter what company and no matter what industry you're in. So I'd say that, you know, yes, we will have a lot of contextualization, but please pay attention to the underlying generalizable frameworks that are content, context agnostic, that are industry agnostic. So that is something that, uh, because I get asked another flavor of this question, Marie, is this, you know, I'm a B2B company, I'm in a B2C company, I'm in a small company, I'm in a big company, you know, so, uh, or I'm in IT services or I'm in, you know, deep tech. You know, there's a relevance, Re rest assured there's a relevance. Uh, and, and what we try to do is to give you ideas and frameworks and concepts that will help you uh, for a lifetime across whatever job or whatever industry you might find yourself in. Um, now, Kutan is sort of taking that a step further, asking, you know, are we focused on new product discovery and introduction, or are we focused on growing a product business? Um, and sort of a segue as well into Madhura's question, uh, sort of at that early stage of venture funding, is this going to be the right program um, as, you know, using products uh, to move over into an automated platform development um, and getting funding for that? So as you think about the focus for the program, uh, could you address uh, these areas as well? Sort of where where is the program targeted? Yeah, um, both, right? So, so as, as, uh, as I mentioned in the early part of the, the program, you know, we'll talk about a new product, discovering opportunities, doing the discovery process, you know, building a product. But remember, there was a module where we talked about growth. And that's that's basically ongoing product management, because very often you'll be asked to join a team that has an existing product. Right. It's not it's not version zero. It may be, you know, take sales cloud. I was mentioning sales cloud. Sales cloud is probably in its 25th version. So, you know, your job is to take it from version 25 to version 26 to find incremental growth, to, to find, you know, how do you increase the, the penetration and the adoption and the, and the sales for, for, a, for an existing product. We'll do both, right? Because so, so this is really kind of, if you, if you really look at the title of this program, please read it, please read it, what's on the slide. Discovering, developing, and managing and marketing products as a business. And a business, you know, is a going concern. It's an ongoing process. So yes, we will talk about how you bring products to market, to life, but we'll also talk about how you take them to market. And then how do you manage them in an ongoing business through growth, evolution, and ultimately sunsetting. So it's a whole cradle to grave process that we will talk about. Uh, thank you, Professor Sani. And I'd love to give you an opportunity to uh, share any final comments, thoughts, words of wisdom, words of advice. Uh, quickly to those who are, are with us here, uh, one final reminder, uh, we have recorded today's session and we're going to be following up within 24 to 48 hours to provide you with copies of the recording here, as well as all of the slides. Um, if you're not yet connected with an advisor and you receive that email, uh, you can simply reply all and let us know and we'll connect you with an advisor over email. So you can use the QR code, you can use the link, uh, you can schedule an appointment today, or you can wait until you receive copies of the recording and let us know you need an advisor then. Um, but certainly a very pleased uh, to have each and every one of you joining in to learn more about this program. Um, and we hope that you'll get connected with us um, as you explore um, opportunities uh, to begin uh, learning more about product strategy. Uh, so with that, Professor Sani, um, any final words of wisdom that you'd like to leave us with here today? Well, in the words of in the words of Nike, just do it, right? So as I'd say that, uh, uh, what you know, I have to tell you, this is the I, I teach many programs that that are that in our online executive uh, portfolio offering, but this is my favorite. This is my favorite because this is closest to my passion, and uh, and this is actually by far the most popular program that we teach at. Uh, so I, I don't know if, if people know, but uh, Marie, we have more than six thousand students who have gone through this program. And, and I, I get emails every day from people saying, hey, I couldn't have gotten the job at Google without this. So it's really directed at making you successful. It's not just about learning. I mean, I, I, the job to be done using product management terminology, my job is to 
is to give you a head start in your career as a product manager or to allow you to move into this dynamic and really satisfying field. So we're very excited about this program. We are very passionate about what we do. And I think that this is, uh, in my biased opinion, the best offering that is out there in terms of product management. So I hope to see every one of you uh, make this investment in yourself and uh, you will not be disappointed. So thank you. Thank you so much for spending an hour with us today. Thank you, Marie, for, for guiding us through this process. And I look forward to interacting with you as the program kicks off on February 9th. Thank you so much, Professor Sani. Again, an absolute honor uh, learning from you here today. Thank you for joining and staying all the way through the end of our questions here. I um, mean, to all of you from around the globe, thank you again for joining as well. Uh, with that, we sign off here today uh, with a heartfelt uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good day to all of you from around the globe.